Jesse Rich Ministries, called by God to take the word of faith to New York City, America, and all the world. Today, God's people desperately need to be taught who they are in Christ Jesus, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, and walk in the God kind of love so they can live in victory in every area of their life. Stay tuned to today's dynamic message as Brother Rich ministers the word of faith. Hey, praise the Lord. Pastor Jesse Ritz, honored, delighted, glad you tuned in today. Let's just pray. Father God, I pray for each one of our viewers today and listeners, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit's ministering to them the word of faith. And they're having a spirit of faith themselves, going forth and ruling and reigning in this life in Christ Jesus and being a blessing to someone else. And every person that's not saved, that does not know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, I thank you, Lord, for Holy Ghost conviction today in their life, piercing the heart with Holy Ghost conviction that they need Jesus. And for the ones that are, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for meeting every one of their needs in abundance, that they receive the infilling Holy Spirit and go forth in the boldness of God to do works of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we've been reading here from Galatians chapter 3, or excuse me, chapter 6 and chapter 3, and also here from chapter 6 of Ephesians and putting them all together. Now, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14, kind of really revolutionized my Christian life when I found out that sin, sickness, disease was a curse of the law. Well, there were some people sin, this came upon them. But here in Galatians, the scripture says here, in verse 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us, the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, written curses, everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles to Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. And if he be Christ, verse 29, and if he be Christ, then Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Now, notice here that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And as you read Deuteronomy and other places in the Old Testament, but primarily in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through verse 16, lists the curses of the, that come upon mankind through the broken law. In other words, because of sin. And one of them is long, contingent, sore, sickness, the other one is poverty. Now, here in Galatians, um, this chapter 6, now, notice here... Uh, well, this, we'll start here in this verse 6. I want verse 9. But notice here what the, the Scripture says here, the Holy Spirit says. Let him is taught in the Word, communicate him that teaches all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, thou shalt also reap. For he soweth the flesh, shall the flesh reap corruption. But he soweth the Spirit, shall the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now notice here that God said here, we'll reap if we faint not. Now all of us have this, Pressure, thoughts that come to us about giving up. You know, dear souls, have people have taken their life because they couldn't handle any more emotional drama. And some people took their life because they couldn't any, handle any more financial problems. And some people took their life because they couldn't handle any more pain or sickness or they wanted someone just to pull the plug on them. And we understand, you know, that that human person we can only take so much. But as a believer, you've got the greater one in you. And the Holy Spirit is never going to want you to give up and quit on believing God for your miracle. So what we've got to do as believers is keep ourselves built up in God's Word. We've got to know that we've been redeemed from the curse, Galatians 3, 13, 14, 29. And we're admonished by God that we'll reap if we faint not. He promised. Now, here in Ephesians now. We've been reading here from chapter 6, now beginning in verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong, Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you will stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, taking the whole armor of God, and we'll stand evil day, and having done all stand, stand therefore. Having learned the truth, having known the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shall preparation for gospel peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you should be quenched all of our darkness wicked, and take the helm of salvation toward spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication of spirit, and watching there in tooth all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now we need to know that God wants us, He's admonished us to become strong spiritually. So what we've got to do is get into the Word and get the Word in us, and then we've got to do the Word, practice the Word, or exercise the Word of God. One way you can exercise spiritually is tithe, give, support the gospel. 
Another way you can is praying the Spirit every day. Another way you can, or additional to that, is praise God, worship God every day. Get on your knees, lift your hands to God, and begin to praise Him and thank Him. If you can't do that because physical conditions, tell God that you want to, in Jesus' name. You want to be able to worship Him and praise His holy name. And another way is, is just by singing praises unto God in your own privacy, your own home. You don't need to be at church to do this. Thank God, just do it wherever you're at. So God's given us ways that we can exercise our dominion, but he's also given us ways that we can develop spiritually. Now, for our authority that God gave us in and through the name of Jesus, remember Philippians chapter 4, or excuse me, chapter 2, uh, beginning here in verse, uh, verse 9 says, Wherefore God, through verse 11, Wherefore God has not exalted him, and given him name which above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, things in heaven, things on earth, things on earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Well, now, the name of Jesus is above every name. So what we want to do as believers, we want faith in the name of Jesus because it's faith in the name of Jesus that gets the name of Jesus to be productive in our life or to work or, or produce blessings in our life. So we go to God in Jesus' name in prayer, but also we cast down thoughts and stuff that comes to us in the name of Jesus. You want to talk back to any thought that's contrary that comes to your mind uh, this contrary to God's word that comes to your mind. Now, we read there before. Let's go there again. Here in Philippians chapter 4. Now, notice here in this verse 8. Finally, my brethren, what things are true? What things are honest? What things are just? What things are pure? What things are lovely? What things are good to report? If there be a verse to be praised, think on these things. So God's given us a checklist to think on. See, what I'm thinking about, it, it may be true, but is it lovely? Is this a good report? Is this pure? Well, I'm, no. <laughs> then I have no business thinking about it. Now, if it is, then it's God's Word. And so what we need to do is learn to discipline our mind. This takes a lot of work. We're going to be doing this the rest of our life. One of the reasons why people don't receive healing or what they need from God is because they've never renewed their mind to God's Word. They never build their spirit man up on God's Word. See, in Ephesians 3.20, teaches us that God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. So what we're doing as believers, we are always got to be working on our spirit man to get him strong. See the, remember Proverbs there in 18 verse 14, Amplified says, The strong spirit of man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. Now what's going to cause this person to get through this trouble and pain? Their spirit man being strong. Keep your spirit man strong. Get it strong and keep it strong. Now, you start out as a baby, you're not strong when you get born again. So what you want to do is immediately get in the Word so you get in the milk of God's Word, then the meat of God's Word so you can start to grow it. And then as you're hearing that Word, start doing it. People sit in church and, and don't even change. They'll go week after week. Or no, it's a week after week. Now, as a pastor, what you've got to do, or as a minister of the gospel, you've got to get those people acting on the Word. You've got to get them doing stuff. And not just a one-time thing. This is every day, the rest of our life. We're doing the Word of God. We're putting God's Word in motion or in action by doing the Word of God, by practicing. I mean, we read there before uh, in Matthew chapter 7, beginning verse 24, that you've got a wise man, a foolish man, a wise man. Jesus said, he hears my sayings and does them. And the storms come, the winds blew, and great was, the, great was those winds that came against, like typhoon winds, we'll say. And... It didn't destroy his house because his house was built upon a rock. I mean, we've had most people in the body of Christ, most Christians believe that God is in control and everything happens, happens for a reason. Well, <laughs> you're right in part of that. Everything that does happen happens for a reason. And the reason it happened was because Satan wanted it to happen. He came, if it's stealing, killing, destroying, it's from Satan. It's not from God. God doesn't steal. So he's not, he's not the killer. Jesus bore our chastisement when he went to the cross. So it's the devil we don't want to give any place to. And we, give the, we can give place to the devil just by neglecting our spiritual life or walk, by being irresponsible, a derelict in duty, not doing the word of God. No, it's our responsibility to stay in God's word, to build ourselves up on God's word, through the Word of God, doing the Word of God. See, you sit around, hear the Word, watch television, preachers, you know, and maybe get some of the materials they offer. Their new book they got. 
Well, okay, you're going to read the book, and it's going to put more knowledge in your head. Now, what are you going to do with that knowledge? Because it's not going to do any good stored up here. It's got to be put in action. By doing the word. James said, James 1.22 says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See, Peter had loaned Jesus his boat in Matthew chapter, I mean, excuse me, in Luke chapter 5. Matthew chapter 14, Jesus, or Peter was in the boat, Jesus walking on the sea. And Peter said, Lord, if it's Lord, if it's you, Lord, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. Peter stepped out of the boat, started walking on the water. What's he doing? He's acting on the word come. Now, in Luke chapter 5, Peter, before he followed Jesus, uh, he's got a fishing business. He's got partners. He's fished all night long. He said he did and didn't take anything. Didn't catch any fish. So Jesus asked him if he could use his boat. Peter agrees. Jesus got done ministering, told Peter to launch out in the deep. Then Peter says, Master, this is what he tells him, Master, we have told all night long and taken nothing. Then he says, thank God Peter said the next part, man. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. And, They've got so many fish that they called their partners to come over and the boats begin to sink. They call so many fish. Well, that's when Peter <clears throat> left everything and followed Jesus. Now, what did Peter do? He acted on the word. When he stepped out of the boat, he acted on the word. When he loaned Jesus' boat, he acted on the word. Did ask, what Jesus asked him, he did. So what is Peter learning? He's learning to act on what Jesus said to do. Now Peter owes taxes. Time goes by. Peter owes taxes. Jesus owes taxes. Peter, or Jesus says to Peter, go fish and take the money out of the first fish's mouth. Peter went, caught the first fish, took the money out, paid their taxes. He's learning to do whatever Jesus tells him to do. And Mary, who'd never known a man, she said she hadn't, and she hadn't. Wants to know how she's going to get pregnant. And, and the angel said, the Holy Spirit's going to come on you, you're going to conceive. And she said, according to your word, be it unto me. So these are people that's cooperating with what God's saying to do. Now, you're sitting there in church or someplace, and you're a preacher say you need to tithe, and here's what the word said, and you're thinking, oh, I can't do that. Now, what are you doing? You're not doing the word. God didn't say, try it out and see if it works. He didn't say, now, sister, just do your best. He didn't talk that way. Now, preachers talk that way for some ridiculous reason, but, but Jesus didn't. No, God told us what to do with his word and where to put him first. And he said, right here in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12, he said here, bring you all the tithes to the storehouse, that we meet my house and prove me now. See, for that ministry, to be able to keep doing what they're called to do, there's a a cycle of events has got to take place. There's God who's given us his word, calls the preacher to go take the message out, tells the people to support that ministry with their tithes and offerings. Then the preacher can take it out and more people to get fed. Not only an individual that's doing it, feeding or, you know, help supporting them, gets fed, but also everybody else that that ministry is able to reach. So he said here, when we do this, see, I started helping the ministry when I got born again, that fed me on the Word, helping their ministry. They had, they had uh, well, my church had a television program. And then, then when I got the world of the Word of Faith, Brother Aiken had a radio program. So I supported it. I'd go to seminars, hear him teach. He'd get up and talk about how they're behind in the uh, radio offerings. And if we're going to stay on this station, we need you to support it. Well, I'm thinking, I don't want anything to happen to this program. You know, it's feeding me. I mean, I get, I get this taste, but I look forward to that 15-minute program every day. I mean, it's amazing how I've just fed my sp spirit, man, on God's Word. Well, I think I don't want anything to happen to this, so, you know, I'd give extra. Even my, gave my payroll sometimes. Didn't have any line of credit. I got to believe God for something to take place. Time I, you know, time it comes to pay these guys is working for me at a secular job. So, now, this is what God set up. And, you know, as we tithe and give, we put ourselves in a position to receive from God. Now, there's going to, the trial's going to come. Satan's going to come. He's going to come either way, whether you do the word or not do the word. But if you're doing the word, you're going to pass the test. You'll still be standing. The other person will be suffering something they never would have had to suffer. So when you do tithe to God, give God your first 10%. And 
and just stay faithful to it. You know, give out of your gross, not out of your net. You want God, you know, that company paid you the $500. The IRS took out the $45, but the company, you're responsible for the 500 and give God your best. That's your first fruits. And then he said he'd open up the one in seven. The rest is on God. All you've got to do is be obedient to him, keep your spirit man built up, stay strong, stay fully persuaded that you're fully convinced, single-minded on God's word. You can't double-minded. You can't be partially persuaded. You've got to be fully persuaded. God's going to do what he said he would do in his word. He told me he'd open up when he went to heaven and pour me out a blessing. He told me he'd rebuke the devourer for my sake. In the name of Jesus, I'm tithing, and I'm staying with it in Jesus' name. And I'm going to do this. I'm not going to give up on it in the name of Jesus. I'm staying faithful with it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And just keep reading these scriptures to yourself. Memorize them. You know, I'll just say, I'm a tither, and it's written. Bring you all the tithes to the storehouse. Then we meet in my house and prove me now here with, say, Lord of hosts. If I will not open you, the winds of heaven pour you out a blessing, you shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall swallow the fruits of your ground. Neither shall you vine cast fruit for the time fields, say the Lord of hosts. And all nations call you blessed, for you shall bless the land, say the Lord of hosts. Give, and it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give in my bosom. Same measurement belongs, measure unto us again. Now God has promised his word. He'd open up his one in seven. He'd rebuke the devourer for our sake. He'd cause men to give in our bosom. When we put our faith in God. Remember Jesus said, in Mark chapter 11, uh, verse 22, Jesus saying to them, have faith in God. So God wants us to put our faith in him. Now, you know, we all, as Christians, we all think we do. But then something comes up and realize, you know, now, wait a minute. You know, I had not got my eyes on other people. You see, what we want to do is we got to walk in love. We got to walk by faith. We got to obey God's word, walk in spirit. Amen. We're going to be doers of the word. Now, we'll do something for somebody, for your wife, for your husband, whoever. And then if, you're, if, if your eyes are upon them and not on God, you get to expect something back from them. You don't know? And next thing you know, you get agitated because they didn't do anything. They didn't respond. But see, when we do anything for anybody, we're told from God's word, let's do it as unto the Lord. And you know, if you fed the hungry, and you clothe the hungry, and you visit the sick, and you visit people in prison. Jesus said, you did it as unto me. Well, in Colossians 1.13, the scripture teaches us that what do we do in word or deed? Do all name Lord Jesus Christ. And when we work, like in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, beginning here about verse 6, when we work, we're not to work for that company as men pleasers. You know, as long as they're watching, we're working hard, then they're gone, we mess around. No, we work as unto God because he's always watching. Like God's always watching me. I travel a lot, staying in all kinds of places. You know, so people are only with me so much, but you know, God's always with me. Plus the devil's always watching me, you know. But the point is, I know God's watching me. He's listening to me. He hears what we say and how we act. So what if we do? We do as unto him. So if you're a preacher and you got one person comes to me, you want to give them the best you would, is you would if you just preached the Civic Center or Coliseum or whatever. You're, do, you're, you're doing as unto the Lord. And you're thankful that you're able to do it. Same way with the job. They may not promote you. They may not appreciate you. They may not like you. God didn't say they would. He does say promotion comes from him, though. He did say you'd have favor with God and man. So God will meet the need somehow. If, you're, if you work as unto the Lord, don't get an attitude. Think, well, they don't appreciate me. They don't pay me enough. That's not my department. That's not my job description. Who do they think they are? Well, they hired me. They told me they hired me to do X, Y, Z. Now they got me out there pulling up weeds and shoveling snow. Well, do it as unto the Lord. If they don't take care of you, do what they're supposed to do. God's not going to let a soldier of his or a servant of his, child of his, get abused. He's going to move you on. He'll give them an opportunity to do what they should do. Or he'll keep you there for 35 years, and he'll supplement your income some other way. But he'll do something. He'll meet that need. Yeah, so 
I mean, I preached to church many times, but preached to church and, and uh, pastor received an offering. And there's probably three or 400 people there. Let's say, I don't want to exaggerate, let's say between two or 300 people. I think there was more, but it was a nice turnout. And uh, they, they had these, you know, what people call collection plates. And they passed them around. The offering's going to go to Brother Rich. Well, I'm facing, no one really knows it. Uh, well, as far as I know, no one knows that in that church anyway. That I got a huge radio bill I got to pay. And I believe in God, you know. Well, the pastor got up. I preached the service. And uh, he received this offering. And everything comes in. is going to go to Brother Rich. And so they passed these plates around. People gave. And, and you could see they were like stacked up, overflowing. That's how many people they had in the church. And a uh, pastor came up after service over and gave me a check and says, you know, I'm sorry this is all that came in, but, you know, praise the Lord kind of thing. And he gave me a check. It was for $50. Well, he kept all the offering. It's okay. I didn't say one word to him about it. I put the $50 on my radio bill. But, you know, before I got out of his church, someone came up, handed me an offering from them personally, an individual, didn't want anybody to know about it, and it was enough to make a little dent in that radio bill. Well, now that pastor didn't do what he said he was going to do. That's between him and God. I'm not going to say anything about it. Never did tell on him. But the point is, God somehow got through to me. Now, he gave that church an opportunity. And the church didn't know about it. Just, you know, the pastor knew about it. Well, see, on your company you work for, they may not appreciate you. They may not like you. They may not want you there. I had a job for a long time. They didn't like me. They didn't want me. And, but I was a Christian, born again. And so I thought, i got to work this Lord, job as under the Lord. And they want to get rid of me, so they're always trying to find something on me to get rid of me. So at least you're aware of it. You know what's going on. So I'd make myself work as under the job, as under the Lord. And I had that job until I went to Bible school. Now, they probably high-fiving people when they finally, when I left, to go to Bible school. But the bad thing is they closed the place down after I left. I'd spend every day speaking the word of that place, believing God they'd stay open in Jesus' name. But they were getting in financial difficulty, and I don't think there was anybody else there left to plead the case to the place. Well, spiritually speaking, as a believer, you want to keep your spirit man built up so you can always fight the good fight of faith. Now, you're either in a fight right now, a trial right now, or one's coming. I mean, you know, so you always want to be keep yourself in spiritual shape. I mean, you take that, like, uh, world heavyweight boxer. Gets the title of the world, world heavyweight champion. And they get this huge check. And now they're, you know, they're sitting on a home and on the sofa and ordering pizza and eating whatever and, you know, they, day by day, they're getting out of shape. They're not working out. They may pick up the dumbbell now and then, hit the bike a few times, but that's you know, pretty much it. And all of a sudden, they get a call from their agent. They got someone else can, that wants to fight them, that wants to go after that belt, that crown they got. Well, now, you know, and they got to go weigh in, find out now they're 35 pounds overweight. They got to get this stuff off of them. Plus, now they got to go through all that sweat and work to get back in shape because they got somebody that's hungry and wants that belt. They want that title bad, like they used to want it. Now they got to do everything they can to get back in shape. Now that's not going to be any fun. And they're almost going to curse every one of those hot fudge Sundays they had and all those pizzas they had because now it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get all this off. When you get born again, you want to keep a hunger for God's Word. You want to stay in shape. No matter what you achieve and accomplish for God in Jesus' name, you want to stay in shape because you got the devil. It's always the rest of your life going to contest you. As long as you're on this earth, Satan is going to be coming after you. He's going to be coming after you to steal, kill, and destroy. Any way he can, he's listening to your mouth. He wants to catch you on something you said. You know, something, you spoke words of death out your mouth. Now he's got something on you. So you want to repent of all those words? And bind them in Jesus' name, counter them in the name of Jesus, say, God, forgive me. I should have never said that, but I speak words of life to my body in Jesus' name. My back is strong, my body is strong, my mind is strong in Jesus' name. And just decree it and declare it every day. I got this scripture sheet here. I want you to get this one. 
Now, if you're on the main list, if you were a while back, we sent out a card for them, a little card, you know, bigger than a Bible marker, but convenient now. This here is on a sheet. I mean, you can put this on the refrigerator and almost read it across the room. It starts out by saying, from Proverbs 18, verse 14, the strong spirit of man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can bear up or, or uh, raise up or bear? Then and the next one is, find my brother, be strong, Lord, and the power of his might. Then it's got the next one, have not I command to be strong and be of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whether so thou goest. That's Joshua 1, 9. The other one is Ephesians 6, 10. Now this is 2 Samuel 22, 33. Now listen, they're going to get gooder as we go. Better. God is my strength and my, and my power. He maketh my way perfect. The next one is Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is the strength of my life. You need that one? Yeah, we could all use that, right? The next one is Psalm 29, 11. The Lord will give strength to his people. The next one's the next one is uh, Psalm 71, 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. The next one is Psalm 73, 26. God is the strength of my heart. That's what you want to keep saying to your heart in Jesus' name. The next one is Psalm 84, 7. They go from strength to strength. The next one is Psalm 103, verse 5. Thy youth, I say it this way, my youth is renewed like the eagles. And then we got Isaiah 40, verse 11. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings of the eagles. They shall run and weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And then we got Joel 3.10. Let the weak say I'm strong. The Amplified says a warrior. The next one is Habakkuk 3.19. The Lord God is my strength and my personal bravery, my invincible army. That's my Amplified version. And then Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ's strength. On the back side of this sheet, you've got personal confessions you can say from God's word about your life, about your finances, about your body. You want to keep on speaking that covenant you have with God over and over again. That's how David defeated Goliath. He said, I'm not coming against you, the sword and spirit. I'm coming against you, the name of the Lord God of Israel. And David talked his covenant. Talk your covenant. You've got God's word. Order yours today. Get on our website and get it. Give us your address. We'll send it out to you. Give us your email address. Send you to daily devotion. Enjoy being with you. Be in our service this Sunday. Till next time, it's Pastor Jesse Rich. Mind you that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for joining the broadcast of Word of Faith, the outreach ministry and teachings of Jesse Rich. If you'd like for Brother Rich to agree with you in prayer or to receive a copy of today's program or additional teaching materials, contact Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237-170, New York, New York, 10023. Visit our website at www.jesserichministries.com.